Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We have a lot of science to work with here after sending our probe to the moon and we intend to use it. So we are going to do what exactly? Now I'm playing the European Space Agency, so they don't even have basic capsules right now. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they have the ATV, it's technically a pressurized vessel that people can go into, uh, so in theory, it, it's sort of like a crew capsule, but it isn't. And so maybe I should delay the whole crew capsule thing, even though that's not very interesting. And as play, role playing as the European Space Agency, focus on like probes because that's what they've done. Uh, also, we should probably get the European Space Agency's uh, engines. We can get the Viking engines here. I think I'll prioritize that. We are going to pick up the Viking engines finally. And we'll get the XLR99 as a bonus, which is the engine for the X15. And that's something we want as well, I think. Uh, it's somewhat more efficient than the engines we've got. It's heavier too, uh, but maybe it'll be good. So we've got that. I guess we should work our way up to early docking procedures so that we can finally get hydrazine. The European Space Agency definitely has hydrazine. <laughs> so uh, we, should, we should try to get hydrazine as soon as possible. Uh, this has got MMH. This is the higher level stuff. Where's the hydrazine? What's that thing? That looks like a torture contraption. This, this says it's a hydrazine thruster. It's a hydrazine thruster. It's not a hydrazine RCS thruster. But that would be nice. Any hydrazine thruster is better than no hydrazine thruster. Wait, hydrazine itself is a higher technology than Aerazine, NTO, MH, Mon3, etc. MH. I mean, I guess I know hydrazine needs a catalyst and everything. Um, it's a mono, it's an actual monopropellant, but, hmm, uh, I mean, because it's got lower performance than those. Great. Well, I want early flight control. That hydrazine thruster will allow us to make nice tiny little probes, I think. This one's a UDMH AK-20 thruster. And that'll be a lot better if we want to use it than the other Soviet thruster that we've been using. There's this Agena secondary propulsion system too. None of those are RCS per se though. Okay, well, we should, I think. Digital communications might be nice. Uh, by popular demand, we'll get better comms. All right. So it says from this tech level on, your vehicles can function as relays, so that's good. But it does say digital encoding equipment is much more power hungry than the simple analog equipment. Uh, it also says 16 times increase in bandwidth, so, well, we'll see. So we did the lunar flyby. We need to actually hit the moon and then get into orbit around the moon. But we have to watch out. The next thing that actually, the next deadline we have is actually the comm network. We're ready in year three. We just need these units. And then now we have a probe that can actually maintain power and comms for an extended period of time. Alright, uh, maybe we should just configure that quickly. I I'd like to knock that out. We'll build all three rockets ahead of time. I mean, if it takes less than one watt, I don't care really. Alright. That's less than one watt. It doesn't need all the science. Comsat payload. 120, 125 units. Ah. Uh. 
Comsat payload. Well, uh, that's over 125 anyway. So that's how heavy? Oh, just 0.3 tons. So we can convert this for 0.3 tons. And no extra now. Okay, that's good there. But our solar panels, while powerful enough, aren't really the right aspect, I think. For the commsat, we will prefer the other engines. The ORM-65. So I've been using three of them, because that gets us three minutes and 16 seconds of burn time. I'm tempted... I think we should put one ton of control there. We should maybe oversize the panels. I don't suppose I could just put a panel down here and... How bad will it take it? If I do that and then put that there. Will that hurt the panel? That's 38. Once we turn off avionics, it'll be fine. Perpetual. But it can still produce with avionics, so it's super, super good. But obviously there's the delay thing. Th we can't trust this though. This is for like more advanced technology than ours. Maybe I should just include these and abandon the coupler and put some solar panels down here. Whoops. Well, this should be interesting. Maybe I should just put the ComSat payload separate. Would that be more efficient than this? I mean, it's got the service module tank. And we don't have that one yet. Hmm. That says 700 kilograms. Wait, I think I've done something horribly wrong. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> we'll need bigger fairings. Or maybe... Well, it depends on how we feel about those fairings. Were the fairings... Pekka had said that the fairings were the problem before. And maybe the fairings only guarantee this area. And everything out here is going to get damaged or something? I don't know. Guess it's better to be safe. Well, that's not too bad on the tooling. We got that isogrid structure tank. Um, I think we should do isogrid on the upper stage here too. Since we've got it. Same diameter as the core after all. There's COM, so 0-C for now. Now, our control core here only does 150 tons. And it's not additive with the 9 ton control core there and the 1 ton we have at top. So we should probably underfuel the boosters a little bit. Just so that we have control. It's not nice to not have control. Actually, we gotta build 4 of these. <laughs> so that's a lot, but... You know, in theory, they're paying us. That'll take us a long time. I want another pad. ELA-3. Same rockets. It doesn't seem like it costs that much. Right. Um, we got the X-15 cockpit, but we're still working on the... X-15 engine. Let's see what we can do once we get that. Okay, well, let's see what happens when we replace the engine. I mean, the new engine is going to be powerful, but it's also going to... Oh god, it's 50,000. Well, all right. <laughs> Oh my god, it's big! I don't think we need a wasted tank anymore. Well, on the right side, if we tuck it in like this, it won't like... 
you know, fall off. The question is whether we really need strong jet engines or whether we should just go with weaker jet engines. Because these, when we put two of them on, even right now, they, c they almost have a thrust weight ratio of one and ultimately do before we even use the propellant. Really, we might just need them to get us to a decent altitude. We've got a bigger one, the J-75, which is more powerful, I haven't unlocked. The J-79 is just a really nice uh, jet engine. It's tough to beat. There are more powerful ones, but they're all heavier. Now we want a light one. This is only 1.5 tons, gives you 66 kilonewtons. This one has 109 kilonewtons, but it's 2.665, it's a ton heavier. This one has nearly 30 kilonewtons, but it's a whole ton. That's only 1.5 tons here. This is just physically big. <laughs> yeah, I'm convinced that this is the only jet engine for us. Hmm. We can probably make the back a little bit smaller. We'll be needing a bigger wing. I don't want to reconfigure the control surfaces. <laughs> gotta keep it sorta. Of. But what's far off to say about this business? Hmm. This that's fine enough. This is going haywire. What it seems like is that the jet engine front presents a huge area that the air intake does not. The air brake is a whole other business. They wanted me to use the control surfaces as air brakes, but I hate that. Um, but I think this is big enough that we can start contemplating much more serious air brakes here. Should I just add a uh, clip in uh, another fuel tank there to smooth that out? That'd be weird. Oh, it occurs to me, we now have uh, the integral... Uh, we, we should just replace the tanks entirely. Oh boy. Okay, we have to do some surgery here. Because we've got the isogrid tanks now. Nice and straight. That's what I like to see. What does it do there? <laughs> uh, it definitely has this tick mark here, too. See, look at that. The problem isn't so much with the engine. These air intakes... ...functionally have no area. <laughs> You're all the wrong shape. I want a smiley face tank. <laughs> I have very particular needs right now. We'll underutilize this because it's clipping. Still sort of stepwise. What I need is a tank that's fatter at the front end and thinner at the back end. Or maybe I could tilt this. Well, no, that doesn't help. I guess we'll just have to go with that. It's possible to have only one jet engine. And then two of the rocket engines. Not these, though. The smaller ones. This, too, seems like something we should test with a probe core, though. Okay, let me save this, but... I'm gonna put a probe core on the front. This is 847.847 tons. Maybe I should just add some ballast. Flying high, we can do the bio sample, but we can't sneak it in here, but we can probably dump it on somehow. Flying high mass spectrometry, let's just go mass spectrometry. 
Okay, I wanted a goo container. Maybe that can help smooth things out. Far, where are you? Well, let me put it at the top. <laughs> a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, I guess. Okay. P for probe. Oh, uh, we need this heavier. We need the ballast. That's close enough. We need RCS. Another modular radial tank. Don't really want that little bump there. Uh, well. Okay, you. We need some RCS ports. And I guess we have to use HTP. I'm just gonna keep it simple. I think I'm gonna have to attach it and tweak them out. There's no way to get them to not be blasting the wings. They're almost like little eyes. Anyway. No, what's its problem? Oh, yeah, propellant GSE, of course. Okay, let's save that. Upgrade for the propellant. Renovate. How much would it take to add a completely new launch complex where we can build the rockets? New. I guess it'll be ELA-4 then. We, we should have overlap so that I can have the same rockets, so maybe 180. Let's say 10, 10, 40. Alright, we'll try that. I think we'll finish this one up. And then we'll begin rolling out stuff. So, roll out that one, and then I guess we can roll out this one? Alright. I want that one to be closer to being finished. I think the most we can expect out of them is about a month of electric charge. Star Occultation Navigation and Crew Science. Huh. Okay. Okay, we, we, let's try and launch this one now. Uh, 0 0.009 will be fine. We are dark. So, we have 125 units, it's checkmarked that. We just need a very low eccentricity. And 630... Uh, 6,371 kilometers. Alright. Throttle is not working, so there. SAS on. S oh right, SAS won't work until we lose a little bit of mass. Okay. Ignition. Launch and what? That's not how that's supposed to work. It doesn't let me recover it like that. Fine. I don't know. I don't know exactly what happened. We previously launched with not enough avionics. I mean, of course, we've launched with not enough avionics. It's still supposed to go up. We've got another one. But yeah, we'll have to build... Well, we only need to launch three. I think we should just play it safer. And... Make sure it's got avionics initially. Let me edit the other ones. Okay. Well... If avionics wasn't the problem, what was the problem? I don't know. Throttle is up. Ignition. launch. Well, it's going up, so. Okay, booster set. Bearings. Okay, go. Well, we don't want to go too far because it'll be very eccentric. So we'll leave it there. 
Um, let's see if we get enough recovery if we shut down the avionics here. Um, we probably just want to dump this right now, even though it has RCS. We don't seem to have as much comms as I thought. Maybe we're just too far away. Hmm. No, oh, we've got comms here. That's the important part. Okay, dial up and go. Oh. Gosh, that .004 is tough, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, we just have to get to... Uh, uh, let me shut down two of them. I don't know if we're going to use them. We're probably going to use the RCS, but just in case. Oh, the RCS is going to be too weak for that. We'll have to light the engine. Okay, 0 0.001. Tori Bruno would be proud. Anyway, <laughs> oops, I didn't want to focus on Earth. I think a light spin will do. And then let's shut down the avionics. Should net recharge quite easily. We should launch another one. Are you happy with this one? Okay, I think it's happy with this one. Okay, roll up. And ignition. And launch. Okay, fairings. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, well, that's close enough to where we need it. Well, uh, it's getting us to our apoapsis, and then we'll circularize with these engines. Seems alright with it so far. Oh, 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 um... Okay, throttle down, throttle down, hold on. Try not to turn so much. Why does it do this? 5.5? I don't know. Maybe I'll have to spin stabilize it or something. I think it only has two modes, basically. I'm impressed that they've managed to do that. Try and ignite. Okay, well that should be fine for our requirement. Yeah, this counts. It's not perfect in terms of power, but I think it's even recharging right now. And if we turn off the avionics, it'll be good to go. We'll also tell this to tell us about any battery issues. Hopefully it'll do that. Okay, ignition. And launch. Fairing set. Okay, next stage. Okay, basically the same as before. Separation. Oh, one failed. Well, that should do it.
Oh, it's performing the shakeout testing. I trust I don't have to be out here for the shakeout testing. Let me just make sure that it is going to warn me. Maybe I should stay out here. But maybe it's dangerous to stay out here, I don't know. Okay, that is all done. Well, thank goodness. But we'll have to do the four satellite one. I don't know, uh, unmet. Must not have completed co Oh, it's either or. I guess. Does that mean we're done? I'm confused. Oh, it's any. Oh, so as long as we do that one, we're done. Well, we'll just get the rest of the... Fun. I thought we had to do both, but I guess we just do one. Oh, that was easy.